Last episode, I left off in Pismo Beach. This episode, we pick up in uh, San Luis Obispo, where I entered and immediately found it to be very hostile. This uh, bridge seems like it would be the place to be, but they've got it buttoned up pretty tight. Yeah, I don't know, man. When you do stuff like this, all you're really doing is pushing the homeless people out into more visible and more dangerous areas. Overnight, I found that my suspicions were in fact confirmed. All right, well, last night fucking sucked. There's some dude screaming obscenities until like 2 a.m. Really, really close to me. He's probably fucking tweaked out on meth and shit. And then I didn't, uh, I didn't wake up until, well, I woke up uh, early, so I woke up at like 8. And, uh, just couldn't really get back to sleep. The homelessness in the area was pretty, uh, pretty obvious. I don't know how you can get any sleep in a tent like that. Eventually, I found seemingly the one place to sleep away in the woods, away from all the craziness. Yeah, I don't fuck around with the fences around here, man. They got these big no trespassing signs, as if that ever stopped anybody. I don't know, man. You make it this difficult to find a place to sleep. And that's when you get the people in the tents on the sidewalk, you know? There we go. Somebody came through. I was just hoping I wasn't going to have to do the same thing. At this point, I had a lot of gear that was getting really old and worn out. There's a lot of holes in things and, uh, you know, stuff that I didn't really want to throw away, but I just thought needed repairs. So um, I decided to try my hand at just some sewing. The Most of this seems like it's going okay. I mean, it's not the straightest stitches, but, uh, well, you know, what do you expect, really? Now, uh, it's just this last little thing that I'm not that sure about. So I basically just looped it under there once, but I doubt that's really going to hold. Okay, so now this one is going to be a little bit trickier because it just came out of the, uh, the body of the tent itself, leaving this little hole here. So what I would like to do is reattach that. You can see I tried to reattach it with tape. It didn't really work. It came out pretty quickly. So this is going to be interesting. There it is. It should be okay. I mean, yeah, this end I don't really know what to do with. I kind of tied it off there, but I certainly could have done better. All right, the last thing I want to try before I before I even look at the big project that I'm lining up is this. So this is the, uh, the tent poles. Right here. Oh, there goes my thread. You know, this shit's annoying enough, but it's even worse when I'm trying to hold the camera with my other hand. I only have one hand to do it with. So basically, I've been just using this, like, with this end open and this end permanently tied for the last, I don't know, several months. Because that's just kind of how lazy I am. But, um, since I'm sewing, let me try sewing this back together. So there's my stitching. So I just went with like the, the basic like loopy stitch this time. Eventually I made my way out of San Luis Obispo and uh, up to Paso Robles, which I immediately found to be much more accommodating. Bit of a cold, foggy morning this morning. Kind of cool. I like fog. I like it even better if it goes away by like noon. It's been pretty cold lately, honestly. Like, uh, I'm glad I have a good sleeping bag. At midday in direct sunlight, it's actually pretty nice. But uh, yeah, it's definitely like getting pretty cold. From the beginning, the plan was to go up the coast to um, Monterey and Santa Cruz. But as I was 
passing through that region. I just kind of felt like it was getting a little too cold and I didn't really have any solid plans once I was in that area. So I thought maybe it's better to just come back another day. And uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave it there. So I uh, got a bus up to Salinas and then another bus up to Gilroy. Um, and then I started walking up the road towards the pass, just hoping to get a ride. All right, I'm a little bit outside of uh, Gilroy. And apparently, I saw this on the map too, but it is interesting to see how uh, the side of the road is basically just uh, fruit sellers. All this shit, avocados, pistachios. Um, it's pretty much what I see there. And then there was garlic behind me. Found some sort of garlic thing. Strawberries, fresh strawberries. So I guess if you live in this area, you just, uh, you know, Come cruise down this road and get your produce. Six for a dollar is crazy though. Beaches, nectarines, plums, flavored nuts, almonds, cashew, pistachio, pineapple, watermelon, garlic braids, avocado, stuffed olives, pomegranates. Is there anything they don't sell around here? Ten for a dollar, my god. The avocado price wars around here are kind of crazy. And pretty soon I did get a ride. Uh, all the way to a rather large truck stop that was on the other side of the mountains. Um, so, the situation right now is that I have taken too long at this truck stop and now it's going to start raining starting tonight. I always do this. These truck stops are nice and comfortable and they have power and food and everything. But everything's really expensive. I mean, if you've watched my channel for very long, you'll know. I, I, every time I'm at a truck stop, I talk about this. But it's just so expensive and I always get lazy and take too long. I've been trying to get out today. I've been on the on-ramp for like a couple hours. I also did some busking with a southbound sign just to see. I got like $1.50 and some weed out of it, <laughs> which is appreciated, but yeah. This is, um, as far as truck stops go, this is a pretty good one, you know? Like, we're out here in the middle of, like, California, Kansas. Um, and there's really, like, I-5 is weird through the Central Valley, because it really completely avoids all the major population centers. And it just goes through, like, the middle of nowhere. So, you know, if you're going like Sacramento to Los Angeles on the I-5. This is about your only major stop, I guess. There's like a couple other truck stops, but none of them as big as this one. Also, you see the Loves, there's a TA there. And then also there's a sign down this way. You can't see it from this angle, but there's going to be, there's going to be a pilot over that way. So there's going to be three of the major truck stops and all they need there is like a flying J or something. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to get out of the truck stop before the rain hit. Um, and I ended up being in that, that little area for about a week, uh, which was not a whole lot of fun. Uh, it seems like pretty much uh, what's going to happen today is nothing. Nothing's going to happen today. So the rain is supposed to keep going until like 8 p.m. or so. Um, but after that, it should be clear for a couple days, so that's good. Um, I just got really bored of sitting inside at the Burger King. At least they have this nice, uh, little outdoor area that I can sit in. I think it's mostly, uh, so people can take smoke breaks, but I'll take it. At some point, I also realized that if I were to get a ride going south on I-5, there really wasn't anywhere within like an hour's drive that would be a good drop-off point. Um, so I thought that might be one reason why it was getting is hard to get a ride from there. Uh, so I decided to go back over uh, east towards Highway 99, and um, I did get a ride to the nearest town, which is Los Banos. Uh, Christmas was quickly closing in, so I decided to hunker down there for a couple days. Alright, well I know I've shown this before, but not everybody watches every video, so 
it might still be interesting to some people. But this is kind of my go-to, like, luxury meal, I guess. <laughs> the lap of luxury. Um, it's just some uh, green onions, ramen, and sausages. This uh, Hillshire Farm beef smoked sausage. It's one of the nice ones. It's only, um, I think it was like $2.50 for this pack, so that's a pretty good deal. The ramen's obviously dirt cheap. The green onions are dirt cheap, so I think I paid four dollars. Uh, no, it was like five fifty or something like that for a whole bag that uh, gives me basically four of the of these. Uh, I ate two of them yesterday, so you know most of this pack is empty. But uh, that's my uh, my Christmas dinner. Well, my Christmas Eve dinner, I guess. But uh, it's good. I uh, I'm a simple man. I don't really. Uh, I don't have extravagant tastes or anything, so this is honestly like some of the nicest uh, food that I ever eat is this kind of thing. As Christmas uh, approached, I decided to uh, buy a little bit of alcohol to treat myself. I drink every once in a while, but to be honest with you, uh, I think I'm just too old for it at this point. I don't know if it's old or if I'm just like doing it wrong, but like every time I drink, it just goes poorly. And this was no exception. I had a horrible night, really nauseous, and uh, had a bad headache the next day. Um, but I stayed there for Christmas. Merry Christmas. One of the only times you'll see a Walmart parking lot completely empty like that. My uh, tent is right over here. You can't see it, even if you're right up on it, you really can't see it. Um, which is good. I just had to come over here because I needed to find a bathroom. There's nowhere really to like hide around here, if, even if I wanted to poop outside. Which I really don't, if I can help it. So I did find a Carl's Jr. that was open, which I feel bad for them, but at the same time they kind of saved me there. I guess I'm just going to hang out at the tent all day. I don't really have anything else to do. So uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow, I guess. So once the buses were running again, I took a bus all the way up to uh, Merced. And uh, when I got there, uh, things were interesting. They got a whole fucking thing going on over here. Stairs and like buildings and everything. There's a bunch of stuff down there. Something down like that way. There's one over there. There's several over that way. This is like a like a full on shantytown sort of area, I guess. I didn't quite realize. I don't know if that's going to make it real hard to find a ride. It definitely could. But, uh, this is the best chance I got, so. Um, yeah, like I said, I got like an hour left of daylight. And then, um, find somewhere to sleep and try again tomorrow. Ignoring the, uh, warning signs, I did end up setting up nearby. Um... I hate to say it, but I think disaster has struck. My backpack was right here. I thought with it being so close to my tent, there's no way anybody could steal it. I didn't hear anything. I mean, I heard plenty of shit, but I guess that's the problem. I mean... Shit, man. What does that even mean? Um. Fuck. I don't know what to do. I was not prepared for that. I mean, that's audacious to just 
come right up and steal shit from under me like that. Did they take my uh, ukulele too? I think they did. I think it was attached to my backpack, so they just took the whole thing. Wow. Um, <clears throat> let me uh, get what should I have left together and try and figure out what to do from here. Here's what I have left. That's it. <clears throat> um, yeah, obviously I don't want to like leave this shit here. Anything I leave here is just going to get stolen again, pretty sure. So, I'd much rather uh, try and uh, bring it with me, but I don't know how well that's going to work. I'm just literally, I duct tape all my shit together and I'm just carrying it. It's very inconvenient. I need to get a backpack immediately. <laughs> I spent about $50 today going around trying to replace shit. I think I'm like relatively well equipped now. Um, this Walmart that I just went into is on the edge of town so now I'm going to walk this way and see if there aren't too many blood suckers waiting for me. And I'm not talking about mosquitoes. And then tomorrow I'm going to go get a new ukulele from a music store downtown. It looked okay. Hopefully I can get that for under like, you know, $150. I mean, you can get ukuleles for like $60, but if I want a relatively good quality one that uh, comes with a case, you know, we'll see. I just was at the music store. They didn't have any cheap ukuleles. They said that because uh, Christmas just passed, basically all their cheap stock of anything has pretty much run out. He had a guitar and a case for $160. I have $250 in the account right now. So that would be mostly draining the account for that. And I don't know how to play guitar. Exactly. I mean, I could figure it out, but... Uh, so anyway... I need to think about it. I might do that. Um, I need something, you know. It's a way to make money. Admittedly, it is kind of my, like, secondary way to make money. The primary way is through the YouTube channel. But, I still feel like I need something. But I also need to be able to, like, get out of here. So I got a new backpack and a few other things. And, uh, but it needed some modifications still. It wasn't perfect. So, I turned back to my newfound skill of sewing. Alright, well, it took me a couple of hours. But I got one side sewn. So, it's about the messiest threads you've ever seen, but that's where this will go once I'm done with it. Be able to clip it on. Um, it's going okay. I mean, I can do the other side. It shouldn't take me... It should be a little bit quicker on the other side because now I've got a bit of a feel for it, but it's still really annoying. <laughs> just working with needle and thread is just so... So fiddly, especially doing it outside and stuff, but I think the main issue I'm running into is just um, the thread getting all tangled. So, I don't know. I gotta think of something to deal with that, but I need to take a break because I've been at it for like, I think at least two hours, maybe, something like that. Uh, so I'm gonna take a break and go inside and then honestly probably just continue this tomorrow if, if nothing else. So, uh, you know, I'm having trouble with this sewing project. Uh, sewing by hand uh, through 
nylon strapping, two layers of nylon strapping into a pocket and in the outdoors, in the wind and shit. And it's almost like I thought, what could possibly make this harder? Maybe if I couldn't see the thread. This dark thread against a dark background in the dark. I've got you know, a nice overhead light here, but I'm really not making this any easier for myself. All right, well, despite my complaining, um, it is done, so that's nice. So now I've got, here's the, the first one that I did, which is really bad. You can't really see it that well, but especially because of all the, the super glue. There's my latest one. So that's actually like, I think I've improved a lot. The, the last two here just went really smooth did that just now as well probably can't really even tell but um, that should be ready I need to let the uh, the super glue dry the super glue is just insurance because I don't really have confidence in my ability to tie the ends up in a knot um, so it's really just insurance to make sure it doesn't slip out so finally I got on a uh, Greyhound bus got out of Merced but uh, wasn't such a relief because I was headed from Merced all right straight into Bakersfield. Back in Bakersfield. Never really thought I was going to be back here, but I guess, you know, it isn't a very, uh, it's in a hard to avoid spot in California. The bus dropped me off over, over here and then I slept for like an hour just next to the library not a real fun time but it is what it is now i'm getting on this bus try and go down i guess it's kind of like a truck stop over there um and i'm gonna try and get out east towards uh Tehachapi. I decided that I didn't want to go back through LA the way I usually do, uh, and instead I wanted to go see the Mojave Desert. So I was going to take a bus out to Tech Tehachapi, um, and then go further that way. Trains, trains, trains. So there's one thing I know about Tehachapi. Well, there's a couple things actually. But one of them is that it has a famous train loop. The Tehachapi Loop. Which, uh, you know, I'll at least get to have a look at if I go that way. It is possible that trains slide out here every once in a while. I'll keep an eye out for that. It's possible we could uh, go that way. It's been a while. After my last experience with trains, I kind of, I'm not real keen on doing that anymore. But we'll see. If the opportunity presents itself, maybe. Uh, somewhere in here, I did also buy a, uh, a new ukulele from uh, Facebook Marketplace, which was uh, for $40. Um, but you get what you pay for. And the ukulele was, it was just a little toy ukulele, basically and uh it needed new strings and the the tuning pegs were really loose so uh yeah it didn't end up working out happy new year Finally, I got a bus uh, out to Lancaster, California, uh, passing through Tehachapi, but unfortunately we passed through at night, so I didn't really get to see much. Um, I know there is a, a very large wind farm out there, uh, which I would like to see someday, uh, as well as just some you know beautiful mountains, stuff like that. 
So maybe someday I'll go back there. Right. It's a chilly morning in the high desert. I uh, did some research last night while I was not sleeping. And uh, this is the Mojave Desert, specifically the Antelope Valley. And uh, Lancaster is a pretty small, really spread out city. And uh, it is technically in LA County. There's my fun facts about Lancaster. So I had recovered from my stuff being stolen. Um, and I also have to thank the, uh, the people who donated um, after I said something in my last video about that. Um, thank you everybody, you're paying for all this stuff, for sure. Um, but I still had yet to replace my ukulele. So there was another music store in Lancaster that I decided to try, and I uh, got a pretty good result. All right. Um, so I paid $120 for this, and uh, the total value of it is actually like 230 The guy at the music store is super new, super nice. Kind of an old, older guy. He said he'd rather see somebody play it than uh, have it sit in the store forever. And uh, so he gave me a huge discount on everything. I super appreciate that. He said, Merry Christmas. And I said, Happy New Year. I don't know how to thank people properly for stuff like that. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, so yeah, the, the ukulele is actually an electric uke, which is interesting. Um, I don't think I'll ever get a chance to do that, but I gotta just fucking make sure that I don't lose this damn thing. I keep losing the shit, man. I, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those things. You can always, hindsight is twenty twenty. All the stuff that I've lost recently, it's like, I keep going back and beating myself up about it. And like, you know, I do need to look at what I did wrong and try and do things better in the future, but at the same time, I can't keep going back and beating myself up about it, so I just gotta try and uh, move on. Got this thing, I gotta take care of it. I gotta go find a place to play it now. So I walked myself down from Lancaster to a small town of Palmdale, um, which is basically still Lancaster, but yeah, different municipality. Um, and uh, from there I saw that there was a uh, swap meet kind of out on the edge of town, and I uh, thought that might be fun to stop by. Alright, there's that swap meet, and there's actually a pilot over here which is kind of interesting. So I don't know, maybe this will be a good place to hitchhike from. I don't know if I said it already. I might have, but the main thing I'm looking to do at this swap meet is get rid of this uh, this old ukulele, this cheap one that I bought in uh, Bakersfield. It's uh, probably just needs some new strings. Hoping I can get forty dollars for it. This was what I paid. I want to tell people I paid fifty, and we'll see what they offer. You know. And then as far as like. I don't even really know if there's anything I need from the swap meet. I guess like a good, uh, good multi-tool would be good, nice. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe some carabiners or something. A fanny pack, if they're selling a fanny pack, that would be kind of neat. That would, uh, I could probably get rid of some stuff into there. Lighten the load on my back. Reduce the strain on these straps on this cheap backpack. Otherwise, just, you know, have a look around. I think it's only open for another couple hours. It turns out, it was a very good idea that I did stop by that swap. Well, <laughs> very glad that I stopped by here. Um, so basically what happened is, I started uh, talking to this guy. Basically just the first stall that I saw. I was like, hey, you want to buy this uh, ukulele? And he was like, no, but like... Where, uh, what's, where you headed or whatever and like start talking and he just starts offering me shit he's like hey I got this backpack right here this frame uh, you can just have it and he gave me a fucking like a couple strips and uh, he was gonna give me like a sleeping bag and shit I was like well goddamn, it's like generous 
I guess it's like his, this is like his side hustle and shit, so he wasn't even that worried about it. And, uh, you know, he wanted to help out a traveler. So, uh, yeah, I just got a, a sick ass frame backpack for free. And that's gonna replace what I had. Might make some alterations to it. I would like to have a, a loop here for a carabiner on the side so I can hang stuff off of it. Um, and you know, might I'll, I'll take a look at whatever I, whatever else I need. But I mean, I'm happy. That was awesome. And I almost got a ride over to Coachella too. But then it turned out the uh, the person had something else come up and they couldn't do that. But uh, either way, I mean, I'm fucking. I left here better than I came, and, and uh, I did end up giving that, uh, <laughs> I did end up giving the uh, ukulele to the dude, because I was just like, I don't really want to carry it, and you helped me out with so much. He also gave me a sandwich in exchange for helping him pack up some glass that he was selling, so, uh, yeah, really glad that I, that I stopped by there, that was awesome. So from Palmdale, I hitched my way over to uh, Victorville, which is more on the San Bernardino side, again, north of the mountains. Well, this place is a little bit crowded, kind of giving me uh, Merced vibes. But I think it's my best shot. Just find somewhere everything I have kind of packs a little nicer into my tent than it used to, so let's see what we can do with that. Just try and stay away from trouble. That's the good stuff right there. And uh, from there, I got myself a bus down to uh, San Bernardino. It's kind of funny how often I come to this exact transit center. I mean, it makes sense if you think about, you know, coming into California, there's really only a couple places you can really do it. One of the main ones is right here. This is like the gateway to Los Angeles. I think this is my... I guess technically my third time in this bus station. The other two times I was coming in, and so I was taking a train out, but this time I'm taking a bus out. But yeah, it's just kind of interesting how you end up in the same places over and over again. And then I took another bus all the way down to Indio. Here we are in Indio. This is uh, a few blocks away from um, the place where I stayed before, around here. It's uh, quite similar to uh, where I just was, except now we got these goddamn stickers. Somebody was saying they call them goat heads, which uh, seems appropriate because they are the devil. There's these uh, these mushrooms. This is the same thing that I was seeing before, but now they're all weird and yellow. So uh, I guess they're at the end of their life. They still do that. Just help them propagate a little bit there. But uh, yeah, it's not the best place to sleep. <laughs> but same same situation of you know got here in the dark, couldn't see anything, had to just pick a spot. It's uh, eight o'clock right now, so I'm actually getting up pretty early by my standards. And uh, I got to walk over this way. There's a TA travel stop that uh, I'm going to go to and get a shower and wash some clothes and stuff. Um, and then I got to go, you know, roughly that way, I think. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. I hope you liked this video. Um, sorry it took so long to come out. Initially, I was going to just do it, you know, like the other ones with uh, about a one week window of time um but then you know things happened and 
I wasn't really sure that it was going to be a good video anyway, so I decided, you know, make the timeline a little bit longer, put a bunch of stuff together that happened. Um, that's probably for the best anyway, and actually I kind of like how it turned out. Um, I think I'm starting to get an idea for the workflow for this type of video, so um, who knows? Maybe we'll see more of that in the future, maybe we won't. Um, but yeah, the editing is always the thing that takes me the longest. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about stuff I might be able to do about that. But anyway, without further ado, um, I have a lot of uh, donations to read out this time. Thank you for everybody who uh, donated after the last video. Um, now you can see where your money went and all that stuff getting replaced. As well as a lot of, you know, transportation costs and food and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, Alright, so to begin with, I have a $10 donation from Michael with no comment. Thank you, Michael. I have a $300 donation from Ernest. No comment. Thank you very much, Ernest. I have a, another $10 donation from Michael, the same Michael, this time with a comment, says, Hello Ross, hoping this little donation helps. Thank you very much, everything helps. Absolutely everything. Um, I have a $20 donation from M uh, Michael, different Michael, um, and the comment says, fun, just fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> not sure what that's in reference to specifically, but uh, sometimes things are fun, other times they're not, so could refer to anything. All right, and then I have a $25 donation from Brian. No comment. Thank you very much, Brian. I have a $100 donation from my mom. Um, this was on my birthday, and she wrote me a little message, which I'm not going to read. Technically don't have to read that at all, but there you go. $100 from my mother. Then I have $20 from Stephen. No comment. Thank you very much, Stephen. Okay, then I have a uh, $8.42. I'm assuming that used to be $10. For some reason, a lot got taken out of it. Uh, I have a donation from Sam. Um, this message got cut off, but I, I remember seeing it the first time when it got donated, and um, I'll kind of give you the gist of it. Um, it the first part says, hello, I'm a subscriber of yours on YouTube. I didn't know how to contact you because I'm mostly offline and dot, dot, dot. Um, for some reason, PayPal is not letting me see the whole message right now. I just tried a bunch of stuff. But um, I remember the gist of the message was that they uh, were offering me a place to stay, I believe, uh, passing through some sort of area, if I were ever passing through some sort of area. And my blanket response to that is I'm not really interested um, I appreciate the sentiment, I appreciate the generosity. Um, it, I'm just not really interested in staying at people's homes, you know. Um, I appreciate the money, that's kind of the main, the main thing I need, the main form of support that I'll accept. And, um, you know, I've occasionally, you know, I got a ride from somebody before, um, through you, through a YouTube comment, um, and I take advice and things, you know, but as far as like, yeah, places to stay at this point in time, I'm not really, uh, I don't really want to do that. It's just a little too far. So thank you for the donation and, uh, thank you for the, uh, generosity. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure what's going on with my PayPal app, but apparently there's like a character limit now that didn't used to be a thing. Um, so I really apologize to everybody whose messages are getting cut off. Um, but this one is $10 from Michael. He says, Hello Ross, happy birthday. One thing for sure, you and I will face change in the future. I know God can... Dot, dot, dot. Um, so, <laughs> I'm really sorry about this. I don't know what's going on. Um, but, yeah. I know God can help you on your journey or something like that, I'm sure. Um, thank you, Michael. Uh, very much appreciate it. Sorry about the messages getting cut off. I don't know what that's about. It didn't used to happen. I don't know why that's just started happening. Maybe there is an update or something. All right, the next one is going to be another $300 from Ernest. Uh, thank you very much, Ernest. Again, if you ever want to message me and, you know, talk, I mean, the amount of money that you've given me at this point is 
it's worth something. So, I don't know. We can work that out if you wanted to message me if there's anything in particular or anywhere in particular you wanted me to go or see. We could work that out. Um, I have another $25 from Curtis. No message on that one. Thank you, Curtis. And then I have $50 from Marcelo. It says, safe travels. That's from January 3rd, so I'm not 100% sure that's uh, right, but I don't think I've read it out before, so there you go, Marcelo. Thank you very much for the $50. And I have $10 from Michael. He says, keep being yourself and making videos like you do. Thank you very much, Michael. I will try and do that, and in fact, I will try and do even better. I have $20 from Ken. He says, hope you replace your gear. Thank you very much. That definitely helped me replace my gear. And I believe that's going to be all the donations for today. Um, so thank you very much, everybody. Everybody who donated uh, for the gear. Everybody who donated for birthday wishes. Um, sorry for the people whose donations got cut off. Um, I don't know what to do about that, but I'll do some research after this and figure that out. Um, thank you anyway, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.